Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Continuing our coverage for the models released just before Summer Nam, we're on to the Fender side of things. Okay, so normally the summer releases are not gigantic by any means. We've got some new colors on existing models, an amp, some new pedals, and a couple of new signature guitars. Let's go ahead and talk about them. Starting with our signature guitars, we have four of them. So this is the Corey Wong Stratocaster, which is a tribute to his favorite Fender that he's used for quite some time. And just doing a quick YouTube search of his name, you know, every single thumbnail, he's got this blue Stratocaster with him. So I think it makes sense that he would have a signature guitar that's just like that. So definitely check out his work if you're not familiar with it. I think he just recently started a show called the Wong Notes or something like that. So that might be something else that you'd be interested in checking out of his. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. So it is a transparent blue finish, a very dark one, and this is an alder body, despite, you know, kind of looking semi what like ash with all these wood grain rings. Not all of them are going to quite look like that. But then we have a really flashy pearloid pickguard. That looks pretty nice. And judging by this, this is going to be a USA made product. And you know, the fact that it's $2,000 <laughs> will also tell you that. Moving on to the back, you have a little bit of a shaved down heel right there. That's always nice. Your usual belly cut back here. And that appears to be locking tuners on here. And you get his signature decal on the back. Okay, so pretty basic guitar, but let's find out what's going on under the hood. Whoa, whoa. Really? Satin lacquer for the body? That looks like full gloss to me. Okay, maybe these things will look way different in person then. I would have thought for sure that'd be full gloss right here and then like maybe do a satin neck. That's about what that looks like to me. But not according to the spec sheet, but that is nice to know that it's a, a legitimate lacquer. That's kind of interesting. But we have a modern D-shaped neck with a, yep, a satin neck and a compound radius. Okay, that'll make some people happy. With medium jumbo fret styles, that'll make me happy. That's what I'm used to on most Gibsons. Bone nut, rosewood. I mean, it seems pretty basic. But as far as the electronics, it looks like we are utilizing his own signature set of pickups by Seymour Duncan. So the Clean Machine Custom Stack Plus for the bridge. So does that mean it's actually a humbucker? Maybe, because the neck pickup is called the same thing but single coil, as is the middle pickup. As far as fancy electronics, it has a master volume with a treble bleed. I mean, that's not too fancy, but we do have a push-push pot on the second tone knob to bypass the entire five-way switch and get you straight to Funk City in position four. Okay, that's interesting. And it comes with a case, so for a signature guitar, that seems to be on spec. And double string trees. How do I personally feel about this one? It's nice. I would review it. I just like it because it's a great color and I like the pick guard that's on it with this particular color. And the dark fretboard, yeah, that works for me. Next up, we've got a new signature for Jay Mascus, a Telecaster this time. He's had a Jazzmaster previously that everybody asks me to review, but <laughs> just never got around to it. But now we've got a Tele. Let's take a look here. Sparkle blue. Okay, I like that. I'm a big fan of sparkle blue finishes, but only blue. I'm not a big fan of other stuff, but it looks like we have some sort of a, a reflective pick guard, maybe. It's also possible that's just a gray color. Sometimes it's hard to tell in these stock photos, but is it aged? I can almost see like a little bit of whitening right here. We move on to the back. That's also sparkle blue, just like the front. Okay, maybe it is aged or it's just the lighting again, but that almost <laughs> looks aged to me. And we've got a signature decal back here. Seems to be fairly vintage inspired. What's our price point? $1,349.50. That makes me think it's made in Mexico. But yet, it's not marked as anywhere and there's no serial number on this one. I wonder if this is like just a, a prototype and they haven't actually made these in production quite yet. I'm not seeing that disclosed wherever it's made, but based on the fact that this is a signature guitar and only at that price point, I'd assume Mexico. I guess it could also be Japan. But it looks like we're rocking the alder body with a gloss finish on it. And they are doing the road-worn nitro lacquer for the neck. So yes, they will be aged. That's pretty much what that means. It's kind of an interesting feeling neck. I've had that on a few of them. The one that comes to my mind first is the Jimmy Page Dragon Telly that has like built-in checking with it and everything. It's kind of interesting. But this one is aiming to recreate his original 1958 top loader telly. Okay. Nice, it's not a string through one, only top load. 
nine and a half inch fretboard radius, jumbo frets on that one, synth bone with his own signature custom pickups. Okay. When I saw this next one though, I was like, what? They reissued it? The Kurt Cobain Jazz Stang came back. I believe this is what, a 90s, early 2000s model where these things have been going up recently in value, but now that they've reissued them, I'd be interested to see what happens to the value of the originals. So I think the old ones, they used blue and red, didn't they? So it just seems like they reissued those for the modern player if you want to buy a brand new one. 1250 bucks. You can get them in Sonic Blue as well as Fiesta Red. But what will make a lot of people happy, they're also doing left-handed versions because it just wouldn't be right to do a Kurt Cobain signature and not do that. And this is to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Nirvana's Nevermind album. Kind of some quirky specs on this one. Alder body with a vintage 7 and a quarter inch radius rosewood fretboard. Only a 24 inch scale length though. And you can have some fun with your in and out of phase of the slider switches. So maybe I'll pick up one of these weird bunny rabbit shaped guitars and see how it plays. But just in case you don't know, Kurt actually designed this and called it the Jag Stang because he liked Jaguars and Mustangs, so he just kind of combined them to get this shape. And then to further commemorate studio album releases, this is kind of interesting. The 30th anniversary Screamadelica Stratocaster. Whew, I guess if you don't know this band, this is one strange looking guitar. <laughs> It's definitely the most eye-catching of the newest releases. So this is for the 30th anniversary of the Screamadelica album, which was very influential within Primal Scream's debuts. But this is just what the album cover looked like. So once you understand that, this is really not all that crazy. This is definitely for big fans of the band. And despite not being like a high-end custom shop release, it's probably more so a collector's item, I would guess. Like when I first saw this, I was like, does that not have a pick guard at all? I thought that'd be kind of cool, but it does have a pick guard. They've just painted. I wonder how they're doing that. I would be interested to take one of these things apart because the fact that it's likely been made in Mexico would be my guess. Yep, Mexico right there. It's a production level guitar, so I don't think they're hand painting each of these. Or are they assembling the entire guitar and then they have something that screen prints it over top of that? I'm not sure. Maybe it just starts all completely red and then this gets somehow put on. Because it's over top of the pickup covers, but not the bridge. Huh. I guess we'll have to see on that. I don't know if I'll review this one or not. It certainly is eye-catching. And it's kind of a new thing, as far as I'm aware, celebrating album releases on top of signature artists like this isn't just you know one particular artist within this named on it it is the entire band maybe it has something to do with a whole bunch of different people within that band but <laughs> but normally you have some sort of a name to a guitar player like a slash signature les paul or stevie ray vaughn this is just the album so that's kind of interesting as far as specs alder body with the custom artwork Modern C neck with a nine and a half inch radius Pal Faro fretboard, 22 medium jumbo frets, two point synchronized trem. So it seems to be spec'd okay if you want to play it too. But next up, we have a new Paranormal series. So about a year ago, they introduced this one. It was a completely new lineup. These were baritones and they've increased incredibly much on the used market. And then there were a few other interesting models. I ended up reviewing this one, this one, and I think that one as well, and I let the other ones go. But I believe I unboxed most of them on the show. But it appears they have now put the initial run out of production, but they've brought them back in new colors. So first off, the Cyclone. It used to come in Daphne blue and a shell pink. Now they're coming in a candy apple red and a pearl white. I think these are nice colors. However, I think I kind of like the baby hues of the initial run, but you can see our prices have gone up just a hair from $400 up to $430. That's just to be expected though. Next up, we have the Toronado. It initially had this blue hue as well as a black variation. Now they've just kind of aged this blue color and gave it a white pick guard. I really like that. That looks nice. It's like an aged Pelham blue. It looks great with this white creamed out pick guard. 
And then I'm also a big fan of this. So I think version two Toronados are way better. Those are nice. I like these finish options. These weren't bad, but I think these offerings are way better. Next up, we had the offset Telecasters in a beautiful natural and a green color. I really liked the look of the natural one, but I ended up reviewing the other one because it was hard for me to choose. But what will I be tempted with this time? Three different options. Wow. This one's also $30 more, but we get a shell pink, Olympic white. I think that'll make people happy. And butterscotch blonde. Okay, nice. I think on that one, I like these new options. They're okay. But I think ultimately I still prefer this natural colored one. But I can see a lot of these black guards selling, that's for sure. Next up, we had the Paranormal Supersonic in an ice blue metallic and a graphite metallic finish. These were only 350 bucks, but now they're priced just the same as the rest at $429.99. Yeah, they're not doing cheap stuff. It seems like they've just priced them all across the board the same, which honestly makes sense. But you get a beautiful beautiful blue sparkle. I would say this blue sparkle even looks better than the J Mascus we were just looking at. This is one that actually encourages me to want to buy one of these. I mean, it's kind of a, a weird left-handed body shape for a right-handed guitar type thing. But what else do we have? Shell pink, not my favorite. I would definitely go blue sparkle. I'm gonna guess that those things are gonna sell quickly. <laughs> Next up, we have the Jazz Bass 54. Initially came in a white blonde finish or a butterscotch. But now look at this thing, black with like an anodized pick guard. At least that's what it looks like. That's cool, but at the same time, it's a little bit very out there. Let's see, what else do we got? Three color sunburst. That looks pretty nice and traditional. So since the first two were kind of very similar, just see-through finishes, I think it's nice that we now have the three color sunburst. It's still very traditional, but then you do have the option to have one that's really out there. The black is quite an interesting hue. And then one of my favorites from the run, the thin line Cabernita Tellies. It had it in a Fiesta red and like a white finish. Those were pretty cool. But now Lake Placid Blue, yes please, that is looking nice. And what is this? Whoa, nice. They say it's a one ply parchment pick guard, but that really looks like the anodized material. I like the black with that, kind of reminds me of 34 burst or just like a dusty cowboy like scene. The only thing that would have made this even better is if they would have tinted the neck a little bit more. I feel like that might be a clash in person because you get this nice dark finish, but then it's a little bit too bright of maple on this. I mean, it's possible it could look good in person too, but that is looking really good. Dare I say it, that is much better than the original color offerings. Like beyond a doubt, both of these are knockouts. And then my biggest critique against the Baritone Cabernita is that it only came in one color and it was kind of a boring ebony finish. I was really hoping to see something more. In fact, if you check out my review and demo of it right here, I'm pretty sure somewhere in there I say the exact same thing. And they finally delivered on that. Which looks nice, but I wish they would have did the black plastics treatment on it. Kind of like the one that we were just looking at. But I think the most beautiful thing in the world is this. I guarantee you this is going to be a $900 guitar within three years. Unless they keep this in production for a while. And seeing as how the resale market was getting very crazy on these things, like there were dealers selling them brand new for 500, some people paying like up to 800 bucks for these. I mean, things were going through the roof. Like these sold listings don't even show you the half of it. And they were actually selling. That's just what all the Squire baritones do. They inflate in value. But I think it's great that this came out again before the prices got just too crazy on those things. So if you want one of these, buy it now. I don't care if you have to do like a firm financing to get it. The Squire Baritones just have a history of going up in value once they're out of production. So grab them while you can at 430 bucks is what I'm saying. I mean that surf green looks great and it's easy enough to change out the plastics if you want one of those darker looking ones. But yeah that's pretty much it. Four new signature guitars and you get some additional color options on guitars that appear to be out of production now. You cannot get the original flavors anymore. But you also have a couple of mini guitars that are acoustics. 
I'm not really interested in those. A Tone Master Super Reverb. That's part of their whole Tone Master program where they're basically using an emulator inside the amp, if I understand it correctly, to do a good emulation of that. So they're lighter in weight. They're easier to take gig to gig. Looks like a couple of new distortion pedals and the Affinity series kind of got a makeover. Now, I could take the time to go through every single one of these, but I think you can just go onto the website and uh, see all the different colors. I mean, there's an HH Stratocaster. There's a three single coil, regular Tele, kind of an interesting Tele Deluxe, left-handed models, Jazz Masters, Jaguar Basses, Precision Basses, Jazz, but I would say the two coolest new ones within the Affinity series is a five string jazz bass. You heard me right, five strings, that is fantastic and freaky. You can get crazy for only 300 bucks. That's a lot of fun and it looks great. And it comes in a couple different finishes too. But check this thing out, a Flame Maple Top HSS for 300 bucks. You can get the Sienna Sunburst, whoa, or Black Burst, fantastic. I'm glad they're offering a really fancy looking one. I think out of everything, this is one of the most impressive things I've seen out of the Squire lineup. Again, I don't follow Squire too much, so maybe they've done this before, but for me, it's brand new, so that's pretty cool. It looks like they even have some left-handed versions out there. That's kind of big news, 250 bucks for a lefty. But overall, some cool offerings. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just the summer releases. It's not the winter releases where all the big things come out. So good stuff came from Fender and Gibson. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.